I'm Daryl Ko. You guys know me. So today I'm going to talk about how to run desktop apps natively using Electron 1.0, which is an open source platform backed by GitHub. Um, so here's an agenda. First things first, we have to understand what people mean by running software natively. And then the differences between desktop apps and web apps, the pros and cons of each, what is Electron, why should you care, a quick live demo, and some additional resources. So um, what does it actually mean to run software natively? Um, developers talk about this all the time. Um, it should not be confused with native data types or formats, which uh, refer to programs that are compiled to machine code rather than intermediate code, which are lower level and require fewer software layers. Um, software that runs natively should to be designed to run on whatever platform or operating system, regardless of what it is. So if you're using a Mac, it's OS X, Windows, or Linux, it should run without any external support and can take and interact with the native systems on your local environment, such as the task icons, dock icons, and menu bars. Um, it should have very little components to it to be lightweight and have minimal computational overhead, and best of all, can be installed directly on the device out of the box, which is easy. Um, some familiar examples you may know of, Spotify, um, the desktop app that you can download for any version of operating system you have, our favorite Slack that we use and abuse every day, don't do that command on screen, <laughs> and Steam, everybody's favorite, I love Portal. So let's go over the, di the differences of the three main types of apps that we use and interact with daily. So desktop apps, they run typically standalone in a desktop or a computer that you download. Web apps that you have to be on the browser um, to run. And hybrid apps, which are becoming more popular nowadays, like Spotify and Slack, as mentioned above, that have two versions, both desktop and web-based apps. And one key cool thing to note is that hybrid apps usually are available whether you're connected to the internet or disconnected, which is a big plus in our global age. So pros and cons of each. Um, I'll go over cons first. The main thing that is annoying for a desktop app is that users have to do the extra step of installing and downloading the programs, making sure that the versions are compatible with whatever is most current, and they have to keep updating as well. So you get all those red icons badgering you to, uh, to update stuff, which is really annoying. So um, they also have limited access to business analytics. For example, like you can't have access to Google Analytics and other tracking, I guess, cookies that <laughs> Google has. So, um, and also, like, when you purchase a desktop app, it's more often associated with one-off purchases rather than a recurring monthly model that most web apps have. Um, pros, though, it usually works without internet connectivity, if it's a good one. Um, better security, because web browsers are one of the most often, or most commonly attacked, I guess, platforms. So you avoid browser hell in the sense that you um, don't have all these cross-browser compatibility issues, as well as cache issues. Um, one more cool feature is the dock icons. Um, so when you have a web app that opens on a tab, users are more likely to close the tab and forget about your web app Whereas if you have a dock icon, it's constantly there, it notifies you, you get the red one, you know, the increment notification button, and you're less likely to close and forget about it. So from, the, from a business perspective, as a company, it's better for your app to be in the memory of the user at all times. Dock bling, it's awesome. You don't get that with web apps. Uh, and that's an XKCD comic about the, pro, uh, the cons of web apps, I mean desktop apps that you have to keep downloading stuff each time. Ask me again. But the good news is it's getting easier and easier to develop desktop apps. And uh, Electron, which is an open source platform backed by GitHub, like mentioned above, um, it lets us create cross-platform desktop apps very easily, regardless of whether it's OS X, Windows, or Linux. It was actually released two years ago in July 2013, um, initially called Atom Shell. Um, and now rebranded as Electron as recently as this year in May. And the stack, it uses Chromium, which is Google's open source web browser platform. It's very lightweight. It runs on Node, uh, JavaScript, HTML5, and CSS, um, jQuery as well. All our good friends that we're used to. Why is this revel relevant uh, to us? Um, you know, in terms of the Senior Capstone project, which is coming along, 
if you want your user to have more access to apps, instead of just doing everything in the browser, you can make a version of it that runs in a desktop, as well as mobile, if you're so inclined. Um, issues that it solves, it uses JavaScript to write all the applications, which is widely accessible, everyone knows it. Lightweight, so you can quickly create and render browser windows as you see fit. Um, has a very simplified and shared library, which includes all your node dependencies and your modules, which means that you can run basically anything in all the libraries that we're used to. Um, and avoids cross-browser compatibility issues, which was previously mentioned. And so it's very easy to use. And their selling point is that if you can build a web app, you can build a desktop app. So who's using Electron? All the cool kids. So Slack, Atom, Visual Studio Code, if you use that. Um, y Hat Rodeo, which I think is one of our employers for hiring day. Not sure if it's this year, but we'll see. Um, WordPress, Postman, and they keep adding new stuff every week. So you can check on their website to see who's using Electron. Um, here's how it works. Ooh, sorry. Here's how it works, actually. There's two processes. One is the main process, and the other is known as the renderer process. And the main process is the one that runs the package.json's uh, JavaScript file, which is usually titled main.js. Uh, this is also known as the application thread. And most of the native features of Electron are only available on this application thread. And with that being said, the benefit is that it sandboxes uh, malicious code or viruses or bugs that typically appear in the browser, so you contain it in your main process, which is um, a good feature for the user. Um, with the added power of interacting with all your local environment's features, so um, access to the file system and access to mail, calendar, things like that. Here's the browser window process, the rendering thread. So purely starting in the main process just initializes the window, and it doesn't actually create and render new windows. And that process is actually taken care of by the browser window. So it takes the HTML file, creates a new window, renders it. And it uses Chromium, um, which ensures compatibility across all platforms because it's done by Google and is awesome. And with that, you also get all your node modules. So that's great. Uh, here's a quick diagram of how it works. You call in the browser window, require it just how you would express. Um, you instantiate the browser windows. You call a reference to it, and then with that, you get all the methods associated with the browser window with your main process. Um, let's get started. So here's the general scaffolding. Your app, there's a package JSON, main.js, and an index HTML. You install it via NPM, um, and then you run electron dot, and that's, that's your app initialized. So let's do a live demo. 1607 full Slack chat. With that, I'll initialize um, three, how do I get out of full screen? Sorry. I'm going to initialize three electron windows, browser windows, I should say. Um, and then, yeah. shoot. And start. So I basically, that created three um, browser windows of a chat room with vaguely familiar people from our cohort that you may recognize. Um, give me one second to pull them all up. So, gosh, oh shoot. So, Man Dandel, Nate Wallace, and in it was, I accidentally closed the other one. I'm sorry. Um, one more time. So anyways, uh, let me get rid of this. Apologies. Mandandel wants to talk to Nate Wallace, so he says, oh, hey, Nate, <laughs> or way. <"Wait." laughs> um, and as you can see, uh, there's a notifications, that button that pops up. Are you able to see it? Yeah? No? It's appearing on this screen for some reason. It's a mirror outing. But anyways, a notifications message is supposed to pop up with uh, Mandandel's name and his message. So those are actually native features of the um, platform that I'm using, which is the OSX. And so um, those are two different browser window instances. And with that, 
you can see how easy it is to initialize it. And I'll show you some code as well. It's pretty short um, of how to walk through this process. So that's the file structure. I have some CSS files and index HTML and the index JS. And with that, you know, in just a 20 lines of code, that's the Electron app initialized. And you can see how it's required and, and how the browser and windows are initiated. So here's the native notifications thing I was talking about. So browsers have a, have a local one built in, but support for that still isn't universal. So um, Electron actually supports HTML5's notification API, but it uses your own local OS to run it. So the display looks you know, different to a Windows user and different to a Linux user and different to a Mac user. And you can see how it's being called there with the new, so it's very easy to use. And um, there are other cool features associated with it as well that are just as easy to implement. Menus, doc tray integration, signed installers, which basically mean you can download versions or certified versions of software without any bugs or creepy viruses, and automatic updaters. And those are other features you can look if you are so inclined. So I guess to wrap it all up, you know, should you actually take the time and build a desktop app, I feel like the internet community is pretty divided on this. That's a cool graph that I found online. Uh, frequent usage versus urgency, and for uh, systems like Slack, which you need to respond to quickly based on how many messages you're getting, it's probably better because you know, it runs faster, it's more performant, and users don't have to scroll through all their tabs to uh, find your Slack message and respond to it. So Spotify, very frequent usage, but not urgent. But since it's so greatly beloved and so popular, might as well. And Evernote, it's um, frequent but not urgent as well. Might as well. You take notes all the time. So thinking about your capstone projects, you, know, you need to design based on how people are going to use your app. The more ways you can reach somebody, probably the better. Um, casting a wider net there. And as long as it just does the job properly, um, that's all that matters. <laughs> and so the trend has become that it's more popular to develop a hybrid app rather than just singularly desktop or singularly web app. So um, here are some additional resources. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.